Hello and thanks for watching. In today's video, I'm going to explain the pop point commissioning process. This involves setting the dip switches, connecting the unit to Wi-Fi, and submitting the online commissioning case with all the relevant photographs direct from site using your mobile phone. My name's Gary from ABC Electric and I've fitted dozens of these units, so let's jump straight into it. Dip switches one, two, and three set the power rating of the unit. So for under normal circumstances, that's seven kilowatts and that's one, one, zero. Switch number four is for the 60 amp fuse saver. Uh, you can set that on site for other settings you need to refer to pop point. And switch number five is set to one if it's a tethered unit and it's set to zero if it's a socketed or universal unit. What you do now is go to settings connections on your phone, click on the Wi-Fi button and wait for the pop point one to turn up. And then when it does, you click on that and you'll connect to pop point. What I recommend you do here is don't connect to the client's internet prior to this, otherwise it will start confusing the process. So pop point comes up, it's checking the quality of the internet connection, click on that and we're ready to go. Now open the web browser on your phone and type in in the address bar 192.168.1.1, press return and that will take you to a page where it's asking you to connect the pop point to the house Wi-Fi network. So select the client's Wi-Fi network and type in the massive long password. Now go back to the consumer unit or sub distribution board and turn the pop point off and then back on again. This forces the pop point to reset and it will now connect to the house Wi-Fi network. Now go back to the pop point unit and you'll see that the white light has changed to a blue light which flashes magenta every few seconds and that means that you have now successfully connected to the client's Wi-Fi. The light on the front of the pop point will now turn green when a car is plugged in and it's in charging mode. It's at this point that I now recommend that you connect your phone to the client's Wi-Fi because we're about to begin the online commissioning case and you're going to have quite a few photographs to upload. The next stage is to get the customer consent form, open the camera on your phone and point it at the QR code and that will ask if you want to be directed to the pop point web page for commissioning. So you just click on that and it will take you straight to that web page. It's important to note that you must already have a user account set up with pop point. Enter your pop point username and password and you'll automatically be taken to the installer commissioning form. You're now going to enter your installer details and the client's name, address, email address and mobile phone number. The next series of this online form is populated mainly with drop down menus. So you're going to enter the make and model of the car, um, then you're going to enter the unit model, then you enter the PSL number which is the pod point serial number um, and you have to on that enter the PSL in capital letters with the hyphen in between. You can't just enter the number so that's something to bear in mind. Then you put the fuse saver uh, rating that it's set to. So if you set the dip switch uh, on the fuse saver to one you'll be putting 60 amps in there otherwise you do need to make a phone call to pod point and it's done over the air. Then you put in your clamp location, the earthing arrangements, TNS, TNCS, etc. The maximum demand, which you should have calculated when you did your pre-installation survey before the job, if solar panels were installed, and all sorts of other information which is required. You're now directed to a part of the form where you have to upload five photographs, which in order are the consent form, the PSL image, the PCB image, the DB image, and the clamp image. Now what I do normally here, because I know what the photographs are, is make a note of them, take all those photographs before and have them in your gallery. So then, uh, as you scroll through this form, and this is why I suggest you're already connected to client's Wi-Fi now, because you've got quite a long process, in, or you would have a long process uploading those photographs if you were doing it over uh, mobile data. Um, so you're going to go through, scroll through your gallery and upload each photograph one at a time. So the serial number, uh, the customer consent form first. So you've got the customer to sign that form. Then the serial number or PSL number, which is underneath the unit towards the left as you're looking at the front of it. The inside of the unit with the cover open, which they call the PCB picture. Um, I also try and show the main cables. Then you've got your sub DB or consumer unit open showing the MCB and the RCD or the RCBO and then you've got your CT clamp location as well which is normally on your main income tails. Another thing to bear in mind here is that none of these photographs are required on the OZEV paperwork or the OZEV submission possibly with the exception of the sub DB or consumer unit photograph. So you need to make sure that you've got these photographs on site or the, otherwise you will be struggling. And once you've completed the form and uploaded all the image files, that's it. You're done and you're taken to an end page on the installer commissioning form. Now 
Now this video has been all about pop point commissioning and the forms that you need for that. However, what I'm doing here is giving you a very quick insight into the software that I use for the Ozev grant. The one that I'm showing here is called Jump Tech, uh, where you've got a, an on-site app which is called Atom for filling in on the day and you can't finish the job until you've actually completed the on-site form. But I also use EV Comply, it depends on the job which one I decide to use. So I've got both running in tandem. I think they're both good apps, there's some pros and cons for each one, so I like to have both to give me the option depending on which particular job it is and what I need to use. Right then, I hope that answers all your questions about commissioning a pop point unit. So that's setting the dip switches. Obviously before that you've got to do all your electrical tests with your car adapter. You've then got to connect it to the Wi-Fi, which is relatively straightforward, but you've got to have done it a couple of times to be familiar with it. And then we have to do the pop point commissioning case, whereby you scan the uh, paperwork and that takes you to straight to the pop point website and you enter all your installer details the client details the car so on and so forth and you upload i think it's five photographs so fairly straightforward right i will see you on the next video so i hope that helped everybody uh, see you later